Hello students, welcome to Narayana Online Classes. Students, in this class, I want to discuss with you an assignment key. Students, look at the first questions. Look at each and every question and uh, taking first question students, what are the main divisions of nervous system? You know that the nervous system has been classified into different uh, main divisions. What are they? The first one is central nervous system, second one is peripheral nervous system, third one is autonomous nervous system. Clear students? What are the main, main organs in the uh, central nervous system? The main organs are first one is brain and the second one is spinal cord. Second one is spinal cord. Whereas peripheral nervous system? Peripheral nervous system is made up of 12 pairs of 12 pairs of cranial nerves, 12 pairs of cranial nerves, and 31 pairs of 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Together, the peripheral nervous system is made up of 43 pairs of nerves. Autonomous nervous system. Let us see the autonomous nervous system. It is made up of two different divisions, namely sympathetic, sympathetic nerves and as usually parasympathetic nerves, parasympathetic nerves together forms an autonomous nervous system. So these are the three major divisions of uh, uh, nervous system. Next question students, according to you what would be the function of spinal cord? What are the major functions of spinal cord? Spinal cord plays an important role in involunt controlling involuntary actions. What are involuntary actions? What are involuntary actions? The sudden actions, sudden movements generally called as involuntary actions. Best example, if suppose suddenly uh, when you kept your leg on the nail, what will happen? Immediately, you will withdraw your leg, isn't it? Sh uh, within a sharp or uh, within a less time, you will withdraw your leg from the sharpened object. How it is possible? Because it is an involuntary action, unknown movement, unknown action, which is uh, received by the spinal cord and hence it is considered as a involuntary actions or action. All the involuntary actions are regulated, monitored, controlled by the spinal cord. Suddenly, uh, you may fall down in the ground. You don't know that while you are playing a, a game, cricket or football, suddenly you fall down on the land. What will happen? After some time, you will wake up, isn't it? It is an unknown moment. So falling down, it is an unknown moment. Keeping your leg on the sharpened nail, it is an unknown moment, okay? Suddenly, uh, somebody hit upon your backside. What you, what you will do after that, uh, you, will, you will turn to backside and you will look at the person, those who have beaten you, isn't it? In this way, the sudden actions are quite different, which are regulated and controlled by the spinal cord. Anyway, spinal cord plays an important role. Spinal cord plays an important role in the central nervous system. One of the major important organ involved in the day-to-day uh, -day living activities is spinal cord, isn't it? Stephen Hales, we know very well about Stephen Hales and uh, other scientists. They've done many experiments, isn't it? They have done some certain kind of experiments on the spinal cord and proved that spinal cord is an important organ uh, which helps in the process of central nervous system. Going for the third question, students. Are all functions of our body under direct control of the brain and spinal cord? What, why do you think so? Are all functions of our body under direct control of brain and uh, spinal cord? Why do you think so? Yes, you know that brain plus spinal cord, brain plus spinal cord together forms one of the major system called uh, central nervous system. The central nervous system is responsible for 
direct control of certain kind of actions which are there in our body. So all kind of uh, uh, functions they are regulated and monitored by the central nervous system. All kind of bodily changed actions or bodily changed movements under the direct control of central nervous system, isn't it? You know that many times for arithmetics and reasoning, we have been doing some mathematical uh, solutions. If suppose some mathematical questions are given, you are trying to do that uh, mathematical uh, solutions or you are trying to solve the mathematical questions which are given. In this case, your brain plays an important role, isn't it? Your brain is, uh, your brain necessary, your brain actions are necessary to solve certain kind of puzzles, isn't it? Anyway, brain and spinal cord responsible for certain kind of functions which are uh, uh, there in our day to day life. Hence, the brain and spinal cord plays an important role in the central nervous system. Even if you take the spinal cord, if you take the spinal cord, suppose take the spinal cord. Spinal cord generally responsible for control and monitoring of involuntary functions, some involuntary functions, isn't it? Anyway, both voluntary and involuntary functions are seen in the central nervous system. As a unit central nervous system, it controls and regulates with the body organs. Clear students? Going for the next question. What are the functions of ventral and dorsal roots in the spinal cord? You know that Bell from Scotland Franco is Mezendi from France. Bell and Franco is Mezendi. There are two scientists namely Bell and first scientist is Bell, second scientist Franco is Franco is Mezendi. The great scientists, the great scientists who done experiments upon the ventral root and the dorsal root ganglions of the spinal cord. What are the functions of ventral root ganglion? What do you mean by ganglion first? What do you mean by ganglion? Can you define ganglion? A ganglion is considered as uh, a cluster. Uh, a ganglion is a structure which contains a cluster of nerve cells. A group of nerve cells are a clusters of nerves are seen in the ganglion. Ventral root ganglion which coordinates with uh, some of the ventral organs. Dorsal root ganglion which coordinates with uh, dorsal root or dorsal organs. Anyway, from, if you take the spinal cord structure, let me draw a spinal cord structure so that you will understand how this dorsal root ganglion and uh, ventral root ganglion looks like. In the transverse section of a spinal cord, if you look at the transverse section of a spinal cord, generally the transverse section of a spinal cord looks like this. So the transverse section of a spinal cord generally looks like this. Okay. In this transverse section of spinal cord, you can see the dorsal root ganglion and the ventral root ganglion. This is the dorsal root ganglion and whereas here you can see the ventral root ganglion. So this one, dorsal root ganglion and whereas below the dorsal root ganglion, ventral root ganglion is seen. From the dorsal root ganglion or from the dorsal surface of the spinal cord, dorsal root ganglion arises which forms some specific nerves like a the dorsal root ganglion may form motor nerves and uh, other kind of nerves or mixed nerves also. So anyway, these specific nerve fibers are connected to organs or effector organs. From these effector organs, what they receive? The dorsal ganglion receives sensation or information. By receiving information from these effector organs, Spinal cord analyzes what kind of information is received and sends the uh, necessary actions or responses to the uh, 
particular organ affector organ anyway the dorsal root ganglion and ventral root ganglion plays an important role in the receiving of information in the receiving of information clear students so they collect the information from various organs and uh, send to the spinal cord for analyzation clear so that are the functions of dorsal root and the ventral root ganglion clear students going for next question what is included in the peripheral nervous system what are there in the peripheral nervous system if you take the peripheral nervous system the peripheral nervous system is made up of 12 pairs of cranial nerves 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves 31 pairs of spinal nerves together 43 pairs of nerves constitutes the peripheral nervous system what are the best what is the best example for uh, cranial nerve or uh, sensory nerve cranial nerves are also called sensory nerves so best example for cranial nerve is first one optic nerve which is uh, considered as one of the cranial nerve or sensory nerve and 31 pairs of spinal nerves which are coming from the dorsal root ganglion and the ventral root ganglion so there are thoracic nerves which are coming from the spinal nerve spinal cord there are uh, remaining coccygeal nerves there are uh, remaining uh, nerves which are originating from the spinal cord responsible for peripheral nervous system clear students so this is the composition of peripheral nervous system this is an exciting assignment key students remaining we are going to discuss in the further classes until be safe thank you have a nice day